looked them in the eye and told them he was going to stay with the Thunder, then got on the plane to the Hamptons, met with his future Warriors teammates, and ultimately changed his mind and decided to go to the Warriors. But Stephen A. did mention he wasn't lying to them at the time he changed his mind. He also mentioned that KD was originally going to join the New York Knicks, then Kyrie swayed him to go to the Nets. Max, mm. if this is all true, he also mentioned he didn't speak to Kevin Durant on the subject, how should he be viewed now? Let me take it one part at a time. There are two parts. There's the Westbrook and then there's the Kyrie, right? Westbrook looks better and better because the feeling was at the time, Westbrook is the leader, but he's not as good as KD, and KD just wants to play the right way, and Westbrook is a ball hog and all of this. But how did Westbrook get along with Paul George, Stephen A.? How did Westbrook get along with That's Paul George? That's his brother. They're getting along Loves. fine up there. I mean, whether or not out there... And Paul George swears by Westbrook. Whether or not they ultimately have more success or less, less success on the basketball court, <coughs> Paul George wasn't the same after the injury last year, but they were having plenty of success on the court. Mm -hmm. And how did KD get along with Draymond Green? Not so well. And how did, you said KD had certain feelings about the way Steph was treated. So now it's like a science and experiment. You have a control with Steve Kerr as well. Right. You have a control group and you have the... the so... So you have Westbrook, next teammate, who plays KD's same position, very similar in a lot of ways. They get along great. Mm -hmm. KD goes to someplace else. Also, there's a problem with ego in terms of the point guard, mm -hmm. and there's a problem with the teammate. So Westbrook looks better and better. That's one. Hold on. There's, a, there, there's part two here. You mentioned some people, not you, think KD has rabbit ears. I am one of those people. I think KD has rabbit ears. KD, you got rabbit ears. Like, that's okay. None of us are perfect. I got lots of problems. Everyone's got problems. KD is one of them. We're human beings. KD, one of your issues is you got rabbit ears. You care what people think. That doesn't make you a bad person. It may make you a good person, right? That you care what other people think about you. That's good in a way. But it can be counterproductive at times. So... With respect to how the Kyrie question goes now, Stephen A., I think that's an excellent way you frame it, right? Is this another instance where KD just doesn't have that leadership thing in him, where he has to follow the aggressive ball handler guy like Westbrook or, or Kyrie? Mm -hmm. And I think this, wh whether or not he has that, whatever the truth is there, the most important thing is this. KD has to stop caring so much about what other people think. Well, if his thing is, I just want to play the right mm -hmm. way, let this dude be like the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the alpha kind of personality, I could be the best player on the team. Let, Good, it doesn't have to be any other way. Let me chime in. Let me chime in. Kyrie have gotten couple. the upper hand because KD was injured? What? Couldn't Kyrie have gotten the upper hand because Katie's now injured? So well, how's he going to say, "Oh, come to the Knicks. I'm not going to play for a year"? Well, uh, I, I don't. I don't. I really don't know the answer to that question. To be quite honest with you, I would tell you that to address your point, I have no problem with the way Katie is. Whatever works for him. If right. having rabbit ears makes you drop forty, so be it. You know, I think KD is a good dude, man. He's a good person. I just think that along the way, others have been victimized by him, mainly Russell Westbrook. And that's what really this comes down to. When you see Russell Westbrook, how acerbic he appears to be at times, sometimes downright volatile, particularly towards the media. Let me say something you don't hear media folks uh, uh, saying too often. And could y'all please put the camera on me? Take those highlights off because this is very, very important. Russell Westbrook has gotten screwed over by the media. If there, if, there's, if there is truth, and I believe there is, when you, if, if, if you sat there, if KD sat down with you, Nick Collins, and Royal Ivy and those boys, and he told y'all to y'all face, he was coming back. I got to have these meetings in the Hamptons, but I'm coming back. And then he changes his mind. And all he did was text you without calling. And the narrative is he left because of you. When, in fact, more of it was about Sam Presti. Because understand Sam Presti's pedigree now. He comes from the Spurs. This man is exceptional as an executive in a lot of people's eyes, no doubt. He's done a damn good job. Even though he once had a Baca and Harden and Westbrook and Durant at the same time. But understand, and Reggie Jackson, but understand something. Sam Presti, that thing I brought up about not wanting KD's, you know, poster on the Chesapeake Arena. Sam Presti is one of those guys that are all about team. They're not about one player being marketed above the others or whatever. At least at one time, that was not the case. You've got to wonder what kind of impact that had, particularly with KD. Remember, Kendrick Perkins 
uh, is, is, is said to be one of the individuals that got KD and Russell Westbrook talking really for the first time just this year. Nobody knows how often they talk even now, but we know that they've communicated with one another for the first time in a couple of years, just this past, you know, this, this early spring or whenever it was, February or March or whatever it was. My point is, when we look at KD along those ways, along those lines, the player is one thing, but we're talking about an individual. If you're looking at Golden State and what's transpired, remember what I said. The relationship, you got he has a decent relationship with Steph Curry, but clearly knew that he was never going to be Steph Curry and didn't like that. That's the reason he wanted to leave Golden State. Anybody that's saying that KD promised Golden State he was going to stay and then renege, that's a lie. The Golden State Warriors said that is emphatically not true. That is a flat-out lie. He never told them he was going to stay. So let's not throw KD under the bus in that regard. But I can tell you something that I've known for months. KD was not feeling Steve Kerr at all. At all. Bob Myers, no problem with him whatsoever. But Steve Kerr, and I don't know the reasons why, and I'm not saying Steve Kerr was wrong, but KD's relationship with Steve Kerr has not been the greatest. And I've known that for months from multiple sources in the league. People have talked about that. So when we look at KD right now going to Brooklyn, there's still a lot of question marks, and it, it, it appears it's not just about his health. I want, to, I want to talk about, first of all, the way KD left. Sure. I agree with you. Even if you make a commitment and you tell the guys, I'm coming back, you still haven't signed on the dotted line and you, you have a change of mind. Look, sometimes you got to break one kind of ethical boundary in order to do the right thing by yourself. And so there's no way around it. If you told someone that and then you go back on it, it's kind of messed up. But you're entitled to do that. You're entitled to say, you know what, guys? I met with them. I've come to a new decision. But how you handle it's important. And this speaks to KD, something that he should work on. I believe we all have stuff to work on. Me, you, him, everybody. Here's something he could work on. The way to handle that is not by text, not even by phone call, Stephen A. I believe at that point, when you met with him and gave him, told him you're coming back, KD had to get on a plane, fly to Russell Westbrook, don't make, you know, go to Westbrook, tell him face to face what he was doing, and I'll tell you why that's important. As a kid, I used to hear that, you gotta do it face. I didn't understand, what's the difference? Same information. The difference is it's awkward and it's difficult. And because of that, what you're telling the other person is, I respect you. I respect you enough to put myself in a difficult position, to put myself in this awkward position. No one likes that feeling, but I respect you enough to do it. That would have probably been meaningful to Westbrook. And if it wasn't, that's on Westbrook. And it speaks to what he's, what he's done in the past to me and what he's doing now. Going to Golden State was the easy thing. He didn't like the blowback because that felt bad to him. But it was easy to join a super team that couldn't lose without you. What, what he's doing now is much more difficult. He seems to be to me now, KD, to be a more fully mature person. Stands to reason. He's had more life experience. And he's choosing to go to the major market with the biggest media presence and, and the most media and join up with a guy right. who doesn't have a sterling reputation right. with teammates in Kyrie. Mm -hmm. And do it hurt with no guarantee of victory. To me, that shows uh, progress Listen, first for all, KD. First of all, KD's a grown man. And he's not just a phenomenal basketball player, a person I consider to be the best in the world. But he's also a businessman now and doing quite well for himself. Great family person as well, never gets in any kind of trouble. Class personified in a lot of different ways other than little tit, you know, arguments with the media. That's basically the, 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 the extent of his quote unquote crimes mm -hmm. in the NBA. So this is not this is not something where we look at KD and we need to ignore the maturation that has taken place. You are absolutely right. We need to applaud it, respect it and also understand he has every right to be real and true to himself and to be whoever he is. And there's no problem with that. But to acknowledge that, we must then turn around and acknowledge that that wasn't always the case. Right. And by acknowledging that that was not always the case, what don't we have to look at the residue left behind and the impact that it, it had on others? I'm sitting here and telling you right now, Russell Westbrook is a relatively quiet dude. I don't talk to Russell Westbrook. They don't have no beef with him, nothing like that. He don't have no beef with me. I don't talk to him high and by. He keep it moving. You understand? But when I think about the stories that I've heard 
And when I think about what we've talked about and how much of an impact we placed on the shoulders of Russell Westbrook because of Kevin Durant's departure, I think that I, I, I damn near feel it's an obligation to come on national television and go like this, wait a minute now. The person that might have been victimized most, the person that might have been screwed over most is Russell Westbrook. We could put on ticker tape, I'd say KD told OKC the night before. No. KD told Russell Westbrook, yo, bro, I'm coming back. And then not only did not come, but didn't yeah. call. And then Westbrook right. got blamed. And Westbrook got blamed for two years. All right. It makes me think of the Maya Angelou quote, when you know better, you do better. So maybe KD would handle that moving forward. He was in his 20s, and I'm sure he's matured. Uh, two of the top five players in the world on the purple and gold, but who should be the bigger attraction for Kawhi? Stephen A. Max, debate at second hour, coming up next. 